Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Nicoletta. Thank you, uh, Hans. So, uh, as you said, I will uh, report on the future European multilingual information society, reminding that it's a work uh, conducted by many people within the vision groups, roughly maybe 100 people participated in this uh, exercise over uh, nine months. And uh, it was then nicely uh, assembled by uh, George Wem and uh, Ayosha Burchard. So I think we should uh, pay uh, tribute to, to them for the nice assembling of all the ideas we, which were exchanged within those uh, uh, vision groups. Okay, so first maybe some uh, general statements which arise from, uh, from this uh, uh, vision paper. Uh, so uh, language technology is a key issue for multilingualism. Uh, language technology helps uh, preserving culture and facilitating communication. Language technology has commercial value and fosters social inclusion. And multilingualism and language technology are major political issues for the European Union. So if we go now to more uh, specific statement. So we may say that there is a language barrier. Okay? There is... Uh, language barrier regarding the single European market, which is limited by this uh, barrier. So if we uh, consider the report which was uh, presented by the European Commissioner uh, for uh, Consumer Commissioner in 2009, uh, so it says that from 2006 to 2008, the share of European Union e-commerce consumers nicely raised from 27% to 33%, which is a good sign. But at the same time, the European Union cross-border e-commerce remained steadily low at six, going from 6 to, to 7 percent over the same period. Only 33 percent of European Union consumers say they are willing to purchase goods or services in a different language. And so this is the findings. Okay, also the European information space is limited by the language barrier. So if we now look at a different report which was uh, produced by the DG Con uh, Communication for the DG Information Society and Media back in uh, 2011, we find that only 55% of internet users in the European Union use one language other than their own, that only 35% write email messages or post website comments in a foreign language, and that 90% prefer websites in their language. Okay, next, uh, on the fact that languages are a cultural asset. Uh, native languages are an essential medium for the enjoyment of fundamental rights, such as political expression, education, and participation in society. Uh, we see also that the internet fosters languages. English is no, more, no longer the dominant language on the web, and contents, in, especially in Arabic and in Asian languages, are exploding. We may remind that Europe has 23 official languages in the European Union and 60 national, regional, and minority languages. Therefore, Europe's digital agenda must support Europe's languages. Then, we may also stress that language technology is definitely a big business. The European market for language industries, according to a study uh, which was conducted for the uh, DG uh, translation in 2009, had an estimated value of 8.4 billion euro in 2008 and was expected to grow by 10% per annum uh, to reach 20 billion euro by 2015. At the same time, there is an insufficient capacity to cover the wide variety of needs if you consider both the variety of languages, the variety of content, the variety of media, there is not the sufficient capacity to cover all those needs. This is true for translation, interpretation, software localization, and website globalization. But the same applies also for information services, document services, media industries, as well as for communication industries. We must also stress that language technology is there. It is already widely and successfully used in many different applications. When you write text messages or email messages, when you search for information, when you check spelling and grammar errors, when you view online product recommendations, when you use car navigation systems, when you book a flight, when you translate web pages and so on, you are using language technologies. So they are already there and successfully there. Then we may raise some questions, okay, and maybe here some emotions. 
So, should European citizens speak only one and the same language? Should European citizens have access to European, to European information? Should European citizens communicate among themselves? Should the European Union only rely on foreign technologies to address sovereignty issues? Can we accept that some European languages die? Then, are we competing actively enough in the global landscape for research and development in language technology? And can the European cultural background help shape the knowledge society by offering maybe better, more secure, more precise, more innovative, and more robust high quality technology? Our claim is that we believe in multilingualism. We believe in language technology. We believe that European language technology will significantly contribute to economic growth and social stability in Europe while establishing global leadership in technology evaluation. Now, if we look maybe more closely at challenges and opportunities uh, regarding the social and economical uh, background, so we may have a tour of those uh, various challenges and opportunities. First is on suppressing the language barrier. So suppressing the language barrier in commercial exchanges. Here also, from the study which was conducted, 59% of European retailers are prepared to carry out transactions in more than one language. The first obstacle consistently mentioned by businesses, should there be large or small businesses, is the language barrier. 45% mentioned the additional cost arising from language differences as a main obstacle. And especially SMEs consider the language barrier as the main hurdle to go cross-border within the European Union and elsewhere. Then also suppress the language barrier in cultural exchanges. Here we see that 88% of European Union Internet users think that websites produced in their country should be available in their country's official language. But at the same time, 81% think that websites produced in their country should also have versions in other languages. And 44% of European users believe they miss interesting information because websites are not available in the language that they understand. So here, language technology can help by providing cross-lingual technologies in web browsers and email applications. Then, going to uh, assistance to the elderly. We figure out that an aging population in Europe requires assistive technologies that help the elderly master everyday situations and obtain proactive guidance. This is uh, the field of ambient assisted living, uh, which can extend the time people can live in their preferred environment, maintain their health and functional capabilities, and prevent them from social isolation. Language technology can help here. Uh, uh, assistant ambient living needs personalized, natural, simple human communication, and language technologies are affordable and easy to use. Then going to the access for people with disabilities, access to information should be equal to all, regardless of disabilities. Uh, there is a, actually a European directive on accessibility, or more, even more uh, precisely, e-accessibility, and this as well represents a large market. Huh? It uh, is estimated approximately that uh, it covers 50 million European citizens. Here, language technology can help by providing screen readers, dictation systems, voice activity services, automatic sign language recognition and generation, and summarization and content simplification. Immigration and integration, it was mentioned this morning. Access to information should be equal to all, regardless of cultural background and language proficiency. Approximately uh, 60 million migrants live in Europe, according to a report by the United Nations. So there is a need to facilitate communication, provide access to information, and conduct language training in order to better integrate migrants in society. Here also, language technology can help through computer-assisted language learning, instantaneous subtitling, text translation, simultaneous speech translation, and language simplification tools. If we now go to uh, personal information services, they are a necessary community. Broadband access to information and services and mobile communication are now, for everyone, a daily routine. And in this 24-7 economy, we expect quick and reliable answers as well as timely online news broadcasts. 
But information overload at the same time is common and limits uh, a, a lot exchanges. Language technology can help by providing automatic and intelligent question answering systems. We've seen examples uh, yesterday with Watson. Personalized and trusted text and, and speech processing of email messages, text and speech summarization, and use on demand. It also goes with the fact that companies need to address new markets where multiple languages are spoken and when support teams are in different locations, in Europe, all, all over the world. Many jobs presently cannot be filled because of language barriers. And a flexible and mobile population, as we have now, requires multi multilingual skills. LT can help by, uh, through advanced video conferencing services, simultaneous translation within those uh, video conferencing, automatic menu taking, video indexing and search, and generally speaking, advanced with interaction on the internet for collaboration in the workplace, training and education, entertainment, cultural exchanges, and tourism. Participation in social networks is also no a routine activity. Uh, social media has impacted all areas of society and life. It helps solving technical problems, researching products, learning about interesting places, it brings citizens together to express their political power, and we recently see their effect, uh, especially in some uh, Arabic countries. Or more simply, let's say, discuss their positions on topics, important topics for the uh, society, like energy or foreign policy. Also, it uh, makes it possible for uh, politicians, journalists, marketing experts to get the feedback from citizens. Multilingualism is now a norm, not an exception. Uh, less than 30% of the web is in, in English, so this is an estimate which is, still has to be confirmed because we don't have exact figures presently on that uh, number. And also only 50% of Twitter messages are in English and here also this has to be confirmed because it's a, a difficult uh, figure to, uh, to raise. Uh, here we see that the digital divide may be a danger if not everyone has the same access to those means and language technology can help through machine translation of multimedia content, chats and, and tweets, and through uh, real-time media analysis and monitoring in order to conduct a measure of the social impact. Security, improved communication and information access goes together, unfortunately, with increased cyber uh, criminalism, and this is identity theft and internet fraud, and here there is a need for automated tools to detect crimes and monitor offenders. Language technology can help by uh, monitoring, analyzing, summarizing large amount of text, audio and video data in uh, different languages. If we look now to the future and the future trends, so we see the interest of language technologies in cloud computing, in social media, in mobile applications, in web services and so on, and especially for all advanced environments which require advanced interaction. So looking at 3D, virtual and augmented environments, immersive applications, looking at autonomous and domestic robots and agents, here LT must help and is mandatory in order to provide spoken and multimodal dialogue, taking into account also emotions analysis and generation. It's a difficult market. Okay, the market awareness is difficult to conduct, uh, difficult to estimate. Language technology is often hidden within projects and we don't even realize that language technology is there. Uh, while we see a strong and high customer acceptance uh, for those technologies. For example, a new Ford vehicle with voice command, uh, they reported that 60% 60, uh, 60 user acceptance for voice commands and even the fact that 32% of the Ford card buyers were attracted by the fact that it was coming with voice commands. We have to address a, a global multilingual market, so this is also difficult. Fortunately, we have new tools to address this, such as uh, app stores, which facilitate language technology diffusion. And we uh, see, for example, big companies which uh, really believe in the uh, uh, business importance of language technology, such as uh, uh, Google, with the uh, more than 3,000 language pairs, which are handled by, by Google Translate. But this uh, goes with a new economical model and it has to be taken into account. It's not a classical uh, approach uh, to business. Okay, it is, uh, I said, uh, a major political issue for the European Union. Uh, European Union, so a single market but many languages. 
the fact that according to the Lisbon Treaty, uh, <coughs> The 23 official European Union languages must be taken into account. It's mandatory by the European Union institutions in their relations with the European Union citizens, but also within themselves. There is as well a strong interest of regions for regional languages, and we've heard this this morning as well, and regions are ready to support also the coverage of their regional languages. However, we may say that at the present time, the language dimension is still less recognized in the European Union than we, what we may find in India with the TEDIL program and the 22 official languages, very similar to the 23 European official languages, isn't it? In South Africa with the uh, NHN program and its 11 national languages uh, where they develop language technology to allow for multilingualism in their country for text but also for speech with the interest of mobile devices in order to exchange uh, with, the, with the citizens. Okay, so this political dimension, in my opinion, in our opinion, is not, less, is not enough recognized uh, for the time being by the European Union institutions. Okay, now we propose three visions for a multilingual Europe. The first vision on the language, transparent web and media. The web is now multilingual and multimedia. However, most of the content remains hidden uh, because of the language barrier, because of the media barrier. Uh, therefore, we should conduct a stronger integration of social applications, media use and information access altogether and we should envision a language transparent and media transparent web for the user, regardless of age, education, profession, culture, language proficiency, and technical skills. And we may dream maybe that someday, all information produced in the European Union should be made accessible to European city, Euro Union citizens in their own language. This could be a nice target. So we look at truly multilingual online communication, commerce, and education, looking at cross-lingual information access to web and to media in all languages, going up to support 200, up to 1,000 languages, cross-lingual queries, question and answer, intelligent conversational agents, machine translation in social media, chat suites, and so on. Looking at multimedia, multilingual subtitling, uh, also personalized to language capacities for minorities or for migrants. So if you want to know what has been said, for example, on the Hungarian TV on uh, meteorites, so you must get subtitling in order to, to better know about this. And also making document understandable. This is adapt to language proficiency and to technical skills. A second vision is on a natural and inclusive interaction. Digital communication doesn't have any border. The global technical infrastructure exists, already exists, but it lacks natural interaction. And language technology can help overcome the invisible borders in human-to-human -human through machine or human-to-machine -machine interaction while addressing the social and cultural diversity of Europe. So this goes with natural interaction with agents and robots, autonomous, self-learning, context-aware, personalized agents and robots which are able to achieve or who are able to achieve low-level tasks such as sending emails, uh, uh, getting voice messages, or uh, uh, making uh, telephone calls. Assistive applications, and here technologies that help for assistive applications, uh, this is for reduced motor control, e accessibility for the disabled, including the sign languages, and support both education, rehabilitation, and training for the disabled. Cross-lingual e-learning, this uh, is especially intended for remote cooperation of students all over the world, and it goes with computer-aided language learning. And finally, cross-lingual meeting assistants, which have a mimicking speech-to-speech -speech translation ab abilities, uh, which should be headphone and microphone free, which should get uh, wireless, and which uh, includes as well much translation of the, of the slides uh, in real time. Third vision on an efficient information management. As I said, information is growing without limits, uh, including the growth of high quality uh, free information. But however, it's almost impossible to manage information presently, and therefore information value is in danger. Too much information is less information. Language technology can help delivering personalized information, I would say information and knowledge, access and management. 
and it would make the users able to aggregate, evaluate, and share information through federated multilingual audiovisual search, including OCR and, and, and ASR, personalize information assistance, able to search similar documents over the web, to aid to the decision, and to handle the information overload, such as this one, and also live logging, even live logging, uh, including the capture conversation into what we may call a gazetteer of concepts. Okay, in summary, so we may say, and this was the finding of the, uh, the, the, the activities of the vision groups, that language technology is a key enabling technology for a multilingual Europe, that language technology can contribute to the European economic growth and stability, that efforts could be devoted among three axes, language transparent web and media, natural and inclusive interaction, and efficient information management, and we know how to transform those visions into a strategic research agenda in the horizon of 2020. Thank you very much.